All right, greetings everyone and thank you for joining us. Uh, today we're excited to showcase a brand new tool within Plan Predict called Voltage Pro, designed for maximizing stream lanes on utility scale PV power plants. Today's webinar will run approximately 50 minutes with a live Q&A session that may run a few minutes past the hour if you decide to stick around. Feel free to submit your questions anytime during the webinar and we'll try to address as many as we can. A recording of the webinar will be shared in the next 48 hours along with links to the special promos. So for today's agenda, we'll begin with some quick introductions and then we'll jump into the, in, into the product demo and a discussion of safety factors and Delta T followed by a business case describing huge cost savings potential when using Voltage Pro. Finally, stick around for a couple special offers, including a free trial of Plan Predict Pro and special pricing on Solar Anywhere data sets. With that, I'll hand it over to TerraBase Energy's Director of Project Engineering, Jason Spokes. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. Um, I'm really excited to be presenting on Voltage Pro. It's been a really exciting journey to see it grow from an idea to an Excel tool to now a cloud-based application coupled with Plant Predict. Um, so I'm the Senior Director of Project Engineering at TerraBase Energy. Um, my background is electrical engineering. I have been in the uh, electric power industry for over 20 years and in the large-scale solar industry for over 12 years and with that I will hand it over to Mark to introduce himself. Thank you Jason and happy to be here as well. I'm happy to have this op opportunity to speak about um, temperature and about Voltage Pro. Um, I'm the lead researcher at Clean Power Research. Uh, like Jason I've also been around for a while in this industry specifically in renewables I've been around for about 20 years EPC development, academic research, corporate research, and I'm happy to talk about all things temperature today. All right, thanks, Mark. And uh, I'm David Spieldenner. I lead the uh, Plant Predict product team and uh, really excited about Plant Predict Pro and also what Voltage Pro brings to the table. Uh, this is a, a really great addition to the Plant Predict suite of, of tools. I've uh, been in the industry for uh, around 18 years uh, leading the Plant Predict product uh, for the last five. So um, just uh, really excited to have so many wonderful par uh, participants as uh, this is a very well attended webinar. We're grateful for that. And uh, just uh, excited to show you what we got. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to our uh, Vice President of Development Technologies and uh, my boss. Tang Lee to give a little bit of an intro on plant or on TerraBase Energy. Thanks, David. Um, hi, and hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today as we continue our regular series of webinars, sharing news and updates about our products, as well as interesting topics uh, related to the industry. As David said, my name is Tang Lee. I'm VP of Development Technology. I'm responsible for our products and services um, that are geared towards the pre-construction phase of the project. I just take a couple of minutes today to introduce TerraBase for those of you who are not familiar with us. Um, TerraBase is a venture-backed technology company founded in 2019 by a group of industry veterans from, the, um, from SunPower. Our mission is to accelerate the deployment of renewable energy, and we do that by offering digital products uh, and automation products. Our team has deep industry experience. We've worked on large-scale projects, um, primarily uh, solar um, power plants, globally and 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 that experience is the foundation of um, of our products and and services um, if you'd like to learn more about any of these uh, products that are, are shown on the right here please feel free to reach out to me or any of our, my colleagues but without further ado i'll hand it off to mark to introduce um, cpr sure thank you tang um, so i re i'm representing clean power research here today our tagline, or our mission statement is advancing the energy transformation. We're a B2, global B2B SaaS company. Um, and the main product, we have three main products, mainly focused on the utility segment, Power Clerk and Watt Plan. The one more um, that you might be more familiar with is Solar Anywhere. Um, and Solar Anywhere, we serve over 250 plus uh, solar industry accounts, mainly uh, developers, banks, independent engineers, uh, financiers were a bankable data set 
both from the historical, the entire satellite uh, historical record of roughly 20 years up to seven days in the future for forecasts. Um, and we also serve electric utilities and energy uh, agencies, munis, IOUs, co-ops, um, and I'm happy to uh, be representing Solar Anywhere here today. I'll pass it off to um, Jason, who I think is going to run the the first uh, the first of our several poll questions. Yep. Hi, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so the poll should be being distributed at this point. Um, and uh, it looks like we've got results coming in. Um, and it looks like, um, I'll give it a couple more seconds. Uh, and it looks like there seems to be a um, uh, some alignment that the um, uh, the development engineering um, phase of the project is really the the focal point for when the string sizing should be sort of sort of the best time for the string sizing to be finalized. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, okay, so let's move on. <coughs> Um, so we're going to be going into a demo of Voltage Pro, uh, but before we do, I'd like to talk briefly about the relationship between Voltage Pro and Plant Predict. Voltage Pro is tightly integrated with uh, Plant Predict. When you create a project in Voltage Pro, a project of the same name is created in Plant Predict and is assigned as a string size type project. This helps facilitate searching and filtering of projects more easily within Plant Predict. Similarly, when you create and run a string sizing calculation in Voltage Pro, a parallel prediction is created in Plant Predict. And it's the prediction where the open circuit voltages are calculated for each time step of the simulation. Voltage Pro receives that information from Plant Predict and applies additional post processing and safety factors and is what allows us to generate the, the string sizing reports. If you want to see the underlying open circuit data for each time step, you can access this within the plant predict prediction. This is saved within the DC fields nodal data and can be downloaded in Excel. Um, it's also worth noting that the databases within plant predict uh, the module inverter and weather databases are also accessible within Voltage Pro. So these are not two separate databases. Uh, these are all referenced to the Plant Predict database. Um, and so with that, um, now that we have a basic understanding of Voltage Pro's relation to Plant Predict, we're going to take it for a live spin. I would like to highlight um, that we've just published a new in-depth user guide as of yesterday. Um, this should not only help describe how to use Voltage Pro, but also um, explain some of the underlying models and equations that are used within the application. So at this point, let's hop over. I'm gonna pull up uh, Plant Predict. Um, and this is where we're going to start to get into a Voltage Pro live demo. So at this point, um, I'm within my Plant Predict user account, and in the left-hand pane, I can access Voltage Pro here. So I'm going to click on that. And this pulls up the main Voltage Pro page. And what I see is a listing of all of the projects that I have created in Voltage Pro. And within each project, I can create one or more calculations. Um, so for this live demo, let's create a new project. And I'm going to create a project in Ohio, and I'm going to call this Webinar Ohio Solar Project. And I know that my project latitude is 40.415. Uh, 
And I know that my longitude is negative 82.905. And when I enter that basic information, Voltage Pro recognizes the location and I can save the project. Now that I've saved the project, I'm going to want to add a string sizing calculation to it. So let's do that. Once I add the calculation, it immediately brings me to the calculation page. And my calculation is automatically named SCALC01. I can rename that if I want. I can also clone and delete calculations. And you'll see that there's um, some basic input information that I need to put on the left. And my results will, um, or additional information about those inputs, and ultimately the results will be on the right hand side. So you'll see that I need to input weather data, module data, inverter data. I have some simulation settings that I can play with, and then ultimately I'll submit the uh, calculation um, and obtain the results. The weather data. Um, in this, in this uh, pane, we've got the meteorological data and Voltage Pro is referencing the plant predict databases here. And I know that I want to use a multi-year weather data set. And uh, my colleague David had previously uploaded a 20-year time series weather data from Clean Power Research, Solar Anywhere, for this project. So I'm going to use that. So it's pulling in the, um, the temperature data here. And uh, at this point, it's pulled it in. There's some basic information about the data that I've uploaded. I'll click Next. And this is a page that allows me to look a little bit closer at some of the temperature-related data within that data set that I just loaded. So what you'll notice is over to the left, I'm displaying all of the years that were present in the data set that I just uploaded. I also am showing the minimum temperature for each of those years. And over to the right, this is representing the, the, um, the number of months or the months that are present within that data set. So as you can see, for all of the years, my data set is full except for 2021, which where I data. It looks like I only have January worth of data here. And you'll also notice that this negative 12 degrees is a bit lower than most of these other minimum temperatures. And that's probably because this is a partial year. So we're gonna uncheck this. And when I uncheck it, notice that the um, average extreme annual minimum temperature of my entire data set is gonna change. So it's actually gonna get colder, negative 20 versus negative 20.3. And instead of having a 22 year data set, I now have a 21 year data set. I'm gonna save this as it is because I. I want to have a more conservative cold weather temperature. And we'll talk more about um, how this uh, extreme annual mean minimum temperature is used uh, within some of the safety factors. So let's click next. Last but not least, I'm pulling in ground measurement data. In this case, ASHRAE uh, data from my nearest ASHRAE weather station to my project site. And we can see that this ASHRAE weather station is 26 kilometers from my project site. This is also used in some of the calculations and some of the derivations of safety factors. So let's click Save, and let's move on to our PV module. Uh, for this project, I know that I want to use a Longi solar module, and I think it's the very last one. It's the LR572 HPH540M. Uh, that's the one that I'm going to use. I'll click Save. And then for my inverter, um, I'm actually going to filter by my inverters. I'll pick a SunGrow SG4400UD, and I'll click Save. And now it's immediately brought me um, to the Results tab. It skipped over the settings because I don't need to enter the settings. But before, um, before we run it, let's take a look at the settings just to see what I can manipulate. The first is the cell thermal model. Um, 
I have an option of the heat balance model or the Sandia. Heat balance is the standard model or the default within Plant Predict and is also the standard model of PD Syst. I also can use the Sandia model if I choose. Cell temperature is critical to the um, open circuit voltage calculations. I have the conductive and convective coefficients for both. We talked about this uh, at length in a prior webinar. I can also modify the maximum system voltage. By default, we pull in the maximum system voltage from the inverter file, uh, but I can override this if, for example, I have components which have a lower uh, maximum system voltage than the inverter. Last but not least, I can modify the ASHRAE extreme annual mean minimum temperature. This is primarily used in the linear calculation method. I'm going to leave it as default from the nearest ASHRAE station and I'll click save. And now I'm ready to run the analysis. You'll notice that for the linear method or the most basic calculation method, which just uses data sheet and ASHRAE information, um, the calculation has already been completed and that's 26 modules per strain. To get the advanced method calculation, I'm going to need to run it and that's going to go through plant predict. So let's Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so at this point, uh, my calculation is running. <clears throat> and this is going to be going through Plant Predict. Um, I've got 21 years of data, so it's going to take a minute or so. While we're waiting for the, uh, for the calculation to run, Let's take a quick look at the user guide. I just want to point a few things out. So mainly I want to let everybody know that this is available. It helps explain some of the, um, some of the background information and uh, equations and references used in Plant Predict, or sorry, in Voltage Pro. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to draw attention to. We have a section on codes and standards compliance. And we list out the codes and standards compliance for the method one, which is the simplified calculation that we're all familiar with, and the method two, which is the plant predict simulation method. Um, it is Terabase's position that when used with appropriate input data, um, these methods are compliant with these standards, codes and standards. And you'll notice that method one is compliant with more um, because it is a more conservative calculation. So just be aware that this um, table exists, and this table is also replicated on the output report. I also want to draw attention to uh, our uh, one of our references, which is the Karen and Jane photovoltaic string sizing using site-specific modeling, which was published in the IEEE JPV. Uh, this really served as a foundation for which, um, you know, the basic approach that Voltage Pro is built on. So I, we've referenced this in the past, and I just want to let people know that it's there. Uh, there's a lot of information in the user guide. Um, so if you don't catch everything that we're talking about today, feel free to take a look there. Okay, let's hop back over to our uh, simulation, and it's getting close to being done. Uh, keep in mind that this is pumping through... Um, in this case, over 180,000 different open circuit voltages. Um, so it is 21 years of 8760 data, and that's over 100 um, points that it's analyzing. Okay, so it's completed, and we can see under the advanced method, we're at 28 modules per string. Um, we could generate a report, but let's hop through some of the results that are available to us in the in the web. So with the linear method, we're displaying the results from several different string sizes. And we can see that at 27 string, we were just over 1,500 volts. So the, um, the, the result or the correct uh, string sizing in this case was 26. Let's take a look at the advanced method information. And I'm not going to spend too much time here, but there's a lot here. Um, we're going to talk in much more detail about some of the safety factors that are displayed here. Um, but I, I want to um, let everybody know that this is a live results page. When I update any of these values, <clears throat> it updates my results. And what I have here is a number of safety factors that are applied on top of the simulation output. 
The simulation output with those safety factors applied are, is described down here in this table. And we've got basically four different ways of looking at open circuit voltage results. We've got the P100 VOC, which is the most extreme of the 21 year period. And then the P99.5, um, which is the 99.5 percentile VOC. We also are displaying this as MPP and open circuit cell temperature. So there's a slight difference between the two. And uh, we think it's important to pull that out. The open circuit cell temperature is actually a little bit warmer and results in a little lower voltage. Um, with the default safety factors, we're at 20 module, 28 modules per string on this lower, lower item. Um, but we can manipulate these in real time and affect these uh, values. By default, the cold weather variability is set to zero. We can calculate that based on our temperature data, and we, get, we are at a um, safety factor of 2.071. The table was updated in real time. The result of the P99.5 VOC at open circuit cell temperature is still 28 modules per string max, um, but by default, we typically keep this at a safety factor. Again, we're going to talk in much more detail about these safety factors later, um, especially the temperature related safety factors. Um, and the last thing I want to do before we move back to the presentation is show the report that can be downloaded. So uh, we immediately download a PDF report um, and information about the input data that went into the uh, simulation and the string sizing calculations. Uh, there's a summary of the method one calculation. We have the raw method two simulation output direct from plant predict. We have the safety factors that we just talked about, and we have the directed uh, simulation output with the safety factors applied. So this table is basically the same as what we saw in the display in the, in the Voltage Pro. Okay, let's hop back to the presentation. <clears throat> okay, um, so now let's focus on probably the most confusing part of Voltage Pro, and that is the air temperature data safety factor. Uh, that was one of the safety factors that we just saw in the demo. The objective of this safety factor is to correct for temperature bias in our satellite data. The safety factor itself is easy to compute using the equation highlighted here. It's simply the temperature coefficient of VOC, which we can get from the data sheet or pen file, times the air temperature delta T. The computation of delta T, however, is a little complex, so let's spend a few minutes on it. Delta T is the difference between the extreme annual mean minimum temperature from a long-term ground measured source of temperature data, in this case, Voltage Pro is using ASHRAE data, and the same extreme annual mean minimum temperature parameter from our satellite data set. So we're treating the long-term ground measured source as a source of truth. And in effect, we're calibrating our satellite temperature data with that, with that ground source of truth. As described in the bottom left box, when our ground extreme annual mean minimum temperature is less than the satellite extreme annual mean minimum temperature that we're using in our simulation, this is going to result in a negative delta T, a positive safety factor, and increased safety margin. And this makes sense because when our source of truth is colder than the data we're using for our simulations, we want to increase safety margin. Conversely, on the box on the right, when ground extreme annual mean minimum temperature is greater than our satellite data extreme annual mean minimum temperature, this results in a positive delta T 
a negative safety factor and provides justification to help um, reduce some of the safety margin. Okay, um, unfortunately, it gets a little bit more complicated with the air temperature data safety factor, and that's because Voltage Bro calculates the delta T that goes into that safety factor in two different ways depending on the satellite data source. So within Voltage Pro, there is a solar anywhere method of calculating delta T, and there is a non-solar anywhere method. Um, Dr. Mark Perez is going to be speaking in a few slides and is going to go into much greater depth into the solar anywhere method of, ca of, of calculating delta T and the research that they've done on that. Um, but for this slide, I really wanted to help visualize the difference in the two methods. On the left-hand side, we have <clears throat> a map of our Ohio project site location, and it's identified by the green arrow. And we have a clustering of nearby ASHRAE weather stations around it. For the non-solar anywhere data, which is the middle box, we're comparing the extreme annual mean minimum temperature of the project location satellite data set with the extreme annual mean minimum temperature of the closest ASHRAE weather station, which in our case is 26 kilometers away and is identified by this, this, um, arrow point, this A arrow pointer. For this example, I've downloaded 21 years of NSRDB data, and I can see that the ASHRAE extreme annual mean minimum temperature is several degrees colder than my NSRDB satellite data set. It's 3.58 degrees colder. When multiplied by my module temperature coefficient of VOC, I get an air temperature data safety factor of 0.97%. So this 0.97% would be applied on top of the simulation open circuit voltages. Now let's look at how, what's happening when I use solar anywhere data. In this case, my project data set isn't used at all. And that's because my project data set is at a different location than my ground reference points. Solar Anywhere has done the legwork and has already compared every ASHRAE ground measurement station with their own Solar Anywhere satellite data um, so that they're comparing, they're comparing two co-located sets of data. They then interpolate between those points to derive a delta T for the specific project latitude and longitude of my project. And again, Dr. Perez is gonna speak in much greater detail on how the Delta T was derived and the work that they've done. But the advantage that I want to, to really point out here is that with the Solar Anywhere approach, it's more of a map of an apples to apples comparison because we're comparing temperature data from two sources at the same location. And in this particular case, my Delta T is negative 0.697 and my safety factor is only 0.188%. So because we're comparing apples to apples, we're actually, in this case, um, have a much lower safety factor. All right, and then the last slide that I'm gonna speak to is to talk about the cold weather variability safety factor. Um, this one's a little bit easier to wrap our heads around. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, this is treated as an optional safety factor in Voltage Pro and only applied to the P99.5 results. By default, um, it's set to 0%, but it can be automatically computed and included in the safety margin on demand. The objective of this safety factor is to apply higher levels of safety margin where extreme cold weather temperatures have higher variability from year to year. The basic equation for the safety factor is highlighted in yellow and should look familiar. Uh, but in this case, the delta T is derived completely from the project data set. In this case, the delta T is defined as the difference between the extreme minimum temperature of the project data set and the extreme annual mean minimum temperature. So to kind of restate that in layman's terms, we're comparing the most extreme low temperature from our satellite data set with the average 
annual extreme low temperature from the same data set. Uh, Voltage Pro calculates this safety factor the same no matter the source of the weather data. And just for comparison's sake, um, I've included uh, this, this safety factor calculation for this Ohio project site um, from two different satellite data sets over the same 21 year period. So on the left, I have NSRDB, and on the right, I have Solar Anywhere. They're both calculated the same way, just using their respective data sets. And uh, the NSRDB data resulted in a 1.72% safety factor, whereas the Solar Anywhere resulted in a 2.07%. Okay. So now it's time for our poll number two, um, which should be live at this point. And um, it's the question is, what weather data do you use for simulating open circuit voltages for, um, for uh, string sizing? And the results are coming in, and there seems to be a a strong um, uh, uh, majority using uh, hourly time series, although there's um, also a pretty large percentage of folks using TMY data. We'll let that go for another minute or so. All right, um, so yeah, again, 54% um, are using hourly time series data, 26% using um, TMY data, 11% unsure, 8% um, using field measured data, um, and 2% using sub hourly data. So that's pretty interesting. All right, let's, um, I'm gonna hand it over at this point to Mark, who's gonna take it from here talking about uh, some of the research that CPR has done into the uh, air, te air temperature data safety factor. Mark? Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so first, I'd like to touch upon this point that's relevant to the last um, to the last poll question regarding choosing, you know, which choice of data do you use? Do you use TMY or do you use time series data? Um, so this, I'm going to underline the importance of using time series data for this purpose. Typical meteorological year data is just that. It's typical. It's it's a um, it's an averaging sort of exercise where you select the average January from the historical record and the average February, and you piece that together into a kind of pseudo year that approximates the average, but still has um, the variability characteristics that you would see in any given individual month. So it's a useful exercise, but it's essentially you're trying to find the central tendency. And with the extreme value statistics that we're looking for here, the extreme annual mean minimum temperature, that's at the tail end of the distribution. So you're not gonna capture that in, in this typical uh, meteorological year. And just to evidence this point, I, um, I pulled for a single, um, or for all the locations, all the ASHRAE locations that were previously mentioned, there's roughly 9,000 throughout the world. Um, I, I plotted the, at, the, at right here, this is an XY plot showing the minimum um, mean temperature or the minimum temperature from TMY uh, compared to the mean minimum temperature from the time series and anything any of the points that do not line up directly across that very thin diagonal red line these are outliers so this means there's a difference between what the what the time series is saying and at the uh, TMY is saying from the minimum temperature standpoint so the point is you'll get a, um, in a somewhat of an erroneous um, answer so TMY is, is good for doing P50, but if you're doing extreme value statistics and, and the extreme annual mean minimum temperature is one of those statistics, you're gonna be a little bit um, off base. So next, uh, next slide, please. So how accurate is the satellite uh, data relative to ground? So satellites use uh, radiometers um, in order to measure the radiance of the ground because in the radio frequency, any, anything emitting thermal radiation is also emitting, emitting radio frequency. And you can use these sensors called radiometers, which are installed on these satellites in order to infer the temperature from the ground with more or less, uh, with, with, uh, with decent, decently good accuracy. 
Um, and the advantage of the satellite record is that it's available everywhere from the geostation areas. We have 20 years of, uh, of data stretching back to 1998, so a little over 20 years of data. Um, so it's really advantageous in that it's available on a, on a gridded basis at the uh, 10 kilometer uh, res spatial resolution everywhere on every continent across the entire world for 20 years. So ASHRAE is, is discreetly, you, you have to interpolate um, ASHRAE station data or use the nearest neighbor as shown previously um, at discrete locations. And they're not available everywhere as I'll picture it, um, as, as I'll show on, on one of the next slides. And so we calculated this delta T. So what's the difference between the satellite record in terms of extreme annual mean minimum and the ASHRAE record at the co at the at the specific ASHRAE sites? So next slide, please. So these are the ASHRAE sites aforementioned. There's almost 9,000 of them scattered around the world and heavily concentrated in the eastern part of um, the continental United States and in Western Europe makes sense these were probably the most technologically advanced areas and the ashray station started being um, installed in the first part of the 20th century i think there are even some that uh, that stretch back further than that um, there, there are plenty in japan and in um, eastern australia as well um, okay so next slide so to show what the satellite record looks like this is gridded data at the 10 kilometer basis of the absolute minimum dry bulb temperature for every single point on the planet for a single year, 1998. And if you'll go to the next slide, this is another individual year, 2021, and you'll notice that they're not identical. And this is another, um, another way to underline the importance of not using TMY because um, with TMY, you'll select January from 1998 and February from 2021, for instance, so you might not capture the actual minimum mean minimum temperature across the entire historical record. Perhaps you do, but uh, in many cases you won't. Okay, next slide, please. Um, to show the power of this data, I also plotted the um, distribution. These are density plots of the minimum temperature for every point on the planet. Um, so in degrees Celsius on the x-axis, so density plots similar to a histogram. Um, for every individual year from 1998 through 2022. And the vertical dotted lines here that I've pictured are the medians of each of these distribution. Dark blue is 1998 and white is 2022. So it gets lighter as we go further, uh, closer to present day. And you'll notice uh, heuristically, if you look at these vertical lines and their colors, that as we move to the right, um, they're getting lighter. So as we approach present day, the minimum temperature on the planet, the median of the minimum temperature across the planet is getting warmer. And this is a testament to uh, the effect of climate change and um, underlining the importance of repeating this sort of analysis with, uh, with some degree of regularity. Okay, next slide, please. Um, another, um, another way to visualize this, uh, the fact that these numbers are changing over time, this is the true global minimum temperature across the entire planet. So this is the absolute minimum for any point on the planet uh, year by year from 1998 through present day. And I put a linear trend through this just so you can see that it's, uh, it's going up uh, heuristically. And I've highlighted with this orange line the, um, the, the mean um, across the entire historical record. And as you might expect, if we progress uh, as we as we move forward into the future there probably will be more points above the mean line so therefore the orange line inexorably will continue to move upwards over time again underlining the importance of repeating this this analysis okay next slide please um, so here's the meat of the um, of the analysis this is um, the delta T satellite to ground so this is ASHRAE um, minus um, satellite. So if it's um, if ASHRAE is less than satellite, then it will be blue. If ASHRAE is greater than satellite, then it will be red. As you'll notice, most of the points are blue. And the reason for this is the ASHRAE record in many cases is longer than the satellite record. So it has more time to capture um, the to further, uh, colder, colder temperatures. As I mentioned previously, you know, things are getting warmer on this planet as, as we evidence, so likely that mean will, will increase. 
but that's the reason why it's largely blue. The other point I want to highlight with this analysis is that um, there are regions that are red where, where the inverse is true. So it's important to, um, there, there's a spatial difference in terms of this delta T. It's not monotonic. Um, so it's super location dependent. And interestingly enough, the areas in which um, ASHRAE is warmer than the satellite indicates are areas in the mountainous regions. So the, the uh, Himalayas, the Hindu Kush, the Alps, um, the Caucasus, the Rocky Mountains, et cetera. Um, so that's a, just an interesting artifact, probably linked to the calibration of the radiometers on the satellite, if I had to wager a guess, um, but also underlining the importance of um, this regional interpolation. And the way we got this, because we ran this analysis, um, this delta T analysis at the discrete ASHRAE sites, the roughly 9,000 I pictured earlier, and then we spatially interpolated them um, using bilinear uh, interpolation. So that way you can get a delta T anywhere on the planet uh, quite easily. Okay, next slide, please. So I've demonstrated, hopefully, uh, that we can generate site-specific delta T with Solar Anywhere um, sites. Um, so again, Solar Anywhere um, is a full historical time series uh, data set with 20 plus years of, uh, of record at the 10 kilometer resolution 10 kilometer hourly resolution, um, and we can even go higher in certain places in, in uh, North America, for instance, we go down to, we can go down to five minutes in one kilometer. Um, and this Solar Anywhere data, which is constantly being updated, can keep your analysis up to date. And we, um, and we will give you one year of access to the latest data for each site with our promotion that I'll describe uh, later today. So thank you very much, and I think um, I think at this point I will give the microphone back over to uh, to Jason. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Great, uh, great information there. Um, so at this point we have our poll number three, um, and uh, that should be live right now or being distributed. Looks like responses are coming in. What is the primary barrier to using simulation based uh, modeling for string sizing, and we'll give it a few minutes. Um, seeing some uh, statistics coming in, it looks like kind of similar numbers coming in for lack of industry consensus at about and uh, risk of IEOE AHJ rejection. Um, okay, so it looks like. Um, Looks like the polls have closed. Looks like a majority, 38%, believe that lack of industry consensus is um, is one of the biggest barriers. 28% uh, with risk of IE, 16% lack of software tools, 14% lack of technical knowledge, and 5% inver inverter warranty risk. So one of the things that we're hoping to do with Voltage Pro is really start to build some in industry consensus. So it's um, it's good to see that uh, we're attacking that particular problem. All right, um, at this point, I am gonna hand it over to David, who's going to talk a little bit about a business case study for this project in Ohio using a longer string length. Um, David? Thank you, Jason. So now that we've seen how to use Voltage Pro to understand the limits of how many modules we can safely and effectively string together in series, the big question is, what difference does an extra module or two make? We're using the dev platform that's also included in the PlanPredict Pro subscription. I ran a couple of simulations on a potential project site in central Ohio. For this project, I'm targeting a 100 megawatt solar power plant. And I wanna model this plant using both 26 module strings and 28 module strings. The tracker that I plan to use will be a three string tracker. So the tracker length will be 78 modules and 84 modules respectively. As you can see by the table on the slide, we were able to reduce the number of strings by 7.2% using the 28 module string, which then flowed through to a similar reduction in the number of combiners and harnesses. The DC installation labor savings are worth a tenth to three tenths of a cent on our cost per watt basis. Furthermore, my DC cable length was reduced by over 100,000 meters. So if you figure two to three dollars a meter, that could save us two to three hundred thousand dollars in cabling material alone. For this analysis, we are figuring 
that the inverter rating stays the same. However, this is another area that could result in some additional benefit. You may be able to upgrade your inverter and go with a tighter voltage window. We recommend that you check with your inverter manufacturer after running a voltage pro analysis to see what they think. As mentioned earlier, you get 7.6% more modules per tracker row, which results in a reduction of trackers by around 7%. This means 7% fewer tracker motors, 7% fewer controllers, and 7% fewer drive foundations. All of these reductions saving us money. Overall, I think it's safe to say that you could save around six to eight tenths of a cent on your EPC costs when you factor in all the electrical, mechanical, and labor cost savings. And the best part is, as long as you are able to maintain the same GCR on your site, you won't notice any meaningful impact to your energy yield, which means these cost savings will flow right to your LCOE and will have a net positive impact on your IRR. In summary, you can save between six dollars to $800,000 on a 100 megawatt power plant by increasing your module strings by two modules. So let's move on to our next slide. As we look at our plant predict pricing table, I want to point out that Voltage Pro is only available within our Plant Predict Pro and Enterprise pricing tiers. In the case of the Pro package, in addition to Voltage Pro, you get three user licenses, full access to all core Plant Predict features, plus the dev platform. All of this for the very reasonable annual subscription price of $6,000. We also offer additional users for $2,000 per user per year. So think about it. You can save $600,000 on a single project with a $6,000 subscription. What a deal. Now, if you're a larger organization, you can take advantage of our enterprise package, which gets you all the same benefits as the pro, but you get 10 users instead of three, and you also get access to the Plant Predict API and SDK, which stands for Software Development Kit, uh, which are very powerful, uh, a very powerful tool uh, can create a tremendous amount of value. You also get enro enrolled into our concierge support plan. All right, move on to the next slide. As part of this webinar, we are offering you a free 30-day trial of Plant Predict Pro uh, simply by using a special promotion code Voltage, V-O-L-T-A-G-E. You simply need to sign up for a free Plant Predict account at www.plantpredict.com and then go to the subscription page. Click on the promo code button in the upper right hand corner of the screen, enter your promo code, and then celebrate with some confetti. I will now hand it over to Mark to discuss another special offer that is part of this webinar. Sure, thank you. Um, so I'd like to introduce um, a rare thing for Solar Anywhere. I think this may be one of the first times we've all offered such a promo, but currently in the context of this uh, collaboration with TerraBase, we're offering uh, limited time uh, up to 60% off um, promo code for Solar Anywhere sites uh, licenses. Uh, so we're offering the, uh, the sites licenses at our minimum price, which is I think the minimum volumetric price that we offer at around $1,200 per site. And this expires on uh, March 31st, 2023. If you want to uh, learn more about it, you can contact Clean Power Research at the link below and use the promo code um, when, you, when you check out. And don't forget to read the fine print. You can also celebrate with confetti um, as you do with your Terabase deal. All right, and um, now we're gonna go to some uh, live Q&A. Um, and first question I'd like to address is, yes, this webinar recording will be available. So if you're registered, registered we'll be sending out a link um, in the next 48 hours with this webinar recording, along with the information about those uh, couple of special promos. Um, so now jumping into questions, um, I'm kind of grouping them together here. So um, several questions about, um, have any independent engineers accepted this approach? And um, is, is this methodology accepted by the AHJ for large scale solar projects? Um, is there a consensus amongst independent engineers on whether to use P100 versus P99.5? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one, um, Rafal. So these are good questions. And, um, you know, to, to answer simply is, is we know that independent engineers and Owners, engineers, and um, 
HJs are accepting simulation-based uh, results for string sizing. Um, but as, as you know, some of the polls have kind of uh, clar uh, you know, borne out that um, the lack of industry consensus is, you know, what we see is that people are doing this slightly differently um, with different data, different safety factors, different um, uh, sort of approaches to uh, the modeling using different tools. Um, and as a result, you know, the, it sort of spans a wide range of, of results. Uh, we're really hoping that Voltage Pro um, starts to build some industry consensus on, on how we should talk about string sizing and some of the standard um, uh, inputs and standard safety factors around that. Um, you know, I, I don't have any evidence that uh, independent engineers or HJs have accepted this, but this is a brand new product that we're just releasing. Um, and so um, uh, uh, we would leave some feedback from uh, our colleagues who are using this um, on that. So, yep. All right. A um, couple questions here about string lengths. Um, how much longer do string lengths typically get? And do string lengths um, ever increase costs? Longer do ever, longer sizes ever increase costs? Yep, I can take that one as well. So uh, with Voltage Pro, you know, I would say typically one to three modules per string is what we're seeing <clears throat> for um, uh, crystalline silicon modules. Um, does does it ever increase cost? Um, there probably are some edge cases where it could, um, you know, uh, when when things don't physically fit as well on a racking solution or you need to add additional piles, things may not scale linearly from a cost standpoint. Um, it's possible that a, um, uh, a longer string length may not may not fit as well within a um, MPPT voltage window. Uh, so there could be some, some reductions from an energy standpoint, but generally speaking, what we've seen is that, um, you know, typically this is a, a pretty, pretty safe cost savings, but yeah, there probably are some edge cases where it could increase costs. All right. Um, let's see, how is the string size determined in the standard plan predict package? Uh, it's just using the linear method. So it's a very simple calculation using data sheet or pan file coefficient of voltage and the ASHRAE extreme annual mean minimum temperature. Okay, and here I have a couple questions about Solar Anywhere. So I'm starting with, um, can Solar Anywhere data be reused for predictions? And um, do we need a Solar Anywhere sites or Solar Anywhere tiles are sufficient that is this quite this question for me um yes it, it it could be used for multiple purpose the sites data will give you access to the entire historical record um, for any given site so that would be sufficient for simulation you could pull it into pv or any other simulation um, software that you might use to simulate pv production um, so if you have a sites license, you will have access to that from a simulation perspective. I don't know if that answers the question uh, appropriately. Um, and then how much does Solar Anywhere data cost? Um, as mentioned on the previous slide, it's, um, it's a sliding scale based on, um, based on volume. There's a volumetric pricing component. So the more sites you get, the lower the price becomes. And the promotion that we're currently offering through the end of March uh, brings the price for sites down to that minimum price, that minimum volumetric price, which is, I think, 1200 per site or whatever it said on the previous uh, slide. Okay. Um, can you please explain how to integrate SAM and bifaciality? Sure. So we do have simulation code on our end. Um, Really, we expose PV lib now, so you can model bifacial PV using PV lib if you want. We also, you can also, uh, if you have a sites license, download the data and plug it into any number of simulation software protocols. Could be SAM, could be uh, PV Syst, for instance. Um, we do have a specific uh, format. There's a specific format for PV Syst, and when you 
Um, in the drop-down menu on the user interface, you can select uh, PVSYST format, and then you can get the data all ready to go into PVSYST simulation uh, software. So that's how you would use the data in those uh, simulation uh, code bases. But you can use, it's a time series file, so as long as you have um, uh, a simulation code base that can, or software that can read time series data for solar and understand the timestamps and everything, then you could use it with uh, whichever one you're most familiar with. Uh, Jason, do you have anything to add about uh, SAM and bifaciality? Uh, well, integrate those. Um, so my under I'm I'm not an expert in SAM, but my understanding with SAM is that um, the bifacial voltage gain, or the 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 cell or the module voltage um, gain associated with bifacial gain is incorporated into the SAM um, open circuit voltage output. If that's if that's the point of the question, then then my understanding that, that that's correct. Um, it's the same with plant predict. So when you run a simulation in plant predict, the the effect on voltage from bifacial gain is incorporated into the model. All right, um, so we're at time, but we're going to keep on going with the questions for a couple more minutes. And so please stick around if you can. Um, several questions about inverters. Um, what happens when the voltage of a string exceeds the inverter limit? That's one question. And then uh, have you evaluated the tool with inverter manufacturers? Um, so we. So uh, I don't want to speak for any specific inverter, but I would say generally speaking, inverter manufacturers uh, will include some uh, safety margin in voltage for um, for maximum system voltage. So uh, um, I think it's safe to say that typically there will be some safety margin. So if you go to 1501 volts, 1502 volts, that's probably not going to be a problem. Of course, uh, that needs to be uh, verified with the specific inverter manufacturer. Um, uh, I think it's important to remember that in these, um, when we're looking statistically at P100 and P99.5 open circuit voltages, um, this is assuming that the plant is sitting at an open circuit condition for its entire life. In reality, most of the time, it is in an operating condition operating closer to maximum power point so it is not seeing anywhere close to those open circuit voltages um, so there's a level of conservatism already built into this this modeling if you will and the results if you will um, so i'll i'll leave it at that um, happy to happy to um, take that one offline and talk more about you know inverter specific um, uh, uh, inverter manufacturer specific information. All right, another question here. What happens if you have access to other ground uh, stations data? How can those measurements be integrated in the analysis? Uh, good question. So we can, um, so you can override the ASHRAE extreme annual mean minimum temperature as I showed in the in the demo. But the derivation of the delta T today for solar anywhere data is done um, through the research that solar anywhere has done comparing themselves to ASHRAE data. Um, and you know, one of the challenges of using other ground reference data, you know, is is that ground reference data exactly co-located with um, the project site? Because if it's not, if if they're some distance apart, then you're not really comparing apples to apples. That's really the value that Solar Anywhere has brought into this sort of analysis, and we want to expand that to also include other data providers and other uh, ground temperature sources. Um, but but for today, the the CPR specific research is is only um, used in conjunction with that ASHRAE data. Right, and I'd like to add on to that point. It's not only the, the spatial location piece, it's also the temporal range. 
ASHRAE has the advantage of, these are stations that have been installed decades ago. They have a very long historical record, so they're able to capture those extreme value statistics, like the extreme annual mean minimum temperature, pretty effectively. If you have a shorter time span, it may be that you don't get close to the extreme annual mean minimum temperature. It's sort of the same um, differences you'd get when you use TMY versus a long time series sort of data. So if you're talking about a meteorological station, you install pre-construction to assess the local meteorological conditions, you may not get close to the extreme annual mean minimum temperature, and then you would be off if you were to use that sort of data. All right, a uh, question for you, Jason. Uh, is Voltage Pro based on VOC or MPP calculations? Well, all, all of the all the results that we present are VOC, so they are the open circuit voltage. Um, but we calculate that open circuit voltage both at the MPP cell temperature and the open circuit cell temperature. And let me let me kind of um, provide some more information on this. In the um, plant predict module model, for each time step, plant predict is determining that IV curve for that time step. And so Plant Predict has uh, both the MPP voltage and the open circuit voltage at that time step. So we're taking the open circuit voltage at that time step um, and we're calculating it at both the MPP cell temperature and the open circuit cell temperature. Why is that important? Um, if I have a um, string that's operating at MPP and then it instantly is open circuited, it will take some time for the cells to warm up a little bit to that open circuit cell temperature. And so we want to we want to provide that MPP open circuit voltage, if that makes sense, that open MPP temperature open circuit voltage. I know that's a, kind of a brain teaser. Um, as well as the um, the open circuit cell temperature, open circuit voltage, um, because that's more of a steady state condition if the string is open circuited and left open circuited for some period of time. Um, so we're presenting both in Voltage Pro. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. All right, um, we'll take a couple more questions. Um, uh, Jason, have results have been compared with PV tools? Uh, string length calculator put out by DOE and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So um, we have heavily, heavily leveraged the um, approach taken by the Lawrence Berkeley Lab string calculator. Um, that particular model is using um, is is based on pulling in NSRDB data and running um, the open circuit voltage calculations using the Sandia um, uh, open circuit voltage equation. So we're using the, the primary difference is that we're using plant predict for that module model as opposed to the Sandia equations. And uh, we presented in a previous webinar why we, we think that that's not only a valid approach, but it actually brings in some additional accuracy um, that isn't present within the Sandia um, model. One of the main being that you can use a module manufacturer's PAN file, which you cannot use in the Sandia model. Um, so we've, we've sort of looked at that and we came to uh, the, the sort of consensus that we're, we're better off using plant predict. Um, but yeah, the, the, the general approach and the general, um, the, the foundation of, of what we did with Voltage Bro is actually based on that Lawrence Berkeley Lab um, uh, approach. And, and, and this is the what I pointed out in the um, user guide is we, we referenced that particular uh, IEEE paper that was put out by, by that team. 
Um, and as Jason mentioned, we did cover um, a lot of the research that went into Voltage Pro in an earlier webinar. Um, that is on our on the TerraBase YouTube channel, and we'll include it in the follow-up email to this webinar. Um, so, Jason, um, this might be the final question here. Um, some clarification about your previous answer. Um, can you please uh, can you please clarify whether the final string length is determined based on um, open circuit or MPP conditions? Uh, um, yeah, good question. So. <clears throat> the the final string length in the Voltage Pro app results page is based on the open circuit cell temperature. The report that we uh, generate, um, we're careful not to say that this is the answer or that is the answer. We're providing you with the information um, that an engineer can make that decision. We're providing you with all of the information, but not necessarily saying that the magic answer is 28 or 27. Um, in, in our internal practice at TerraBase, we're using the P99.5 open circuit voltage at open circuit cell temperature. Uh, but we're a little bit careful not to, um, not to take a extremely strong position on that. We, um, we provide you with all of the results in the report for, for both of the cell temperatures, if that makes sense. <clears throat> all right, so um, we're gonna end it there. Um, thanks for joining us today. Once again, we'll be sending out a link uh, to the webinar recording in the next 48 hours. Um, there's also gonna be a follow-up um, survey after this webinar. So if you have any additional questions, if there's any additional topics you would like us to cover in a future webinar, uh, please let us know um, in the comments field. Once again, thanks for joining us and have a good day.